The iterative solver stopped. The solver has numerical difficulties. Model may not have adequate fixtures. No result saved. And your only choice now is to shamefully click OK or follow the link to the knowledge base and try to figure out what's going on. So what is going on here exactly, and how do we fix it? Fortunately, it's pretty easy, and we're showing you how in this two-minute tech tip. There's a few different iterations of this message depending on the solver you have selected, but regardless, this particular error is the result of under-constrained bodies. And as the error message suggests, it's because we don't have enough fixtures, or connectors, or contact interactions, all of which constrain the design and make it behave in a more realistic manner during simulation. In the same way that dragging a sketch point in an underdefined sketch can have unintended consequences, an under-constrained component in a simulation study is equally problematic. Now there's a number of ways to work around this error, but to determine which components are responsible for it, we can use a diagnostic tool fittingly named Under Constrained Bodies. Clicking on Diagnostic Tools, and then Under Constrained Bodies, we can simply click Calculate and wait for a short study to complete. This tool identifies any components with inadequate constraints, and any resulting rigid body modes can be previewed by clicking in the Results window. These modes will either be Translation or Rotation, and we can use this information to determine which fixtures or other constraints we should apply next. In this case, a small gap between the box and the scissor lift assembly is preventing the global bonded contact interaction from bonding the components together, leaving the box completely unconstrained. I could solve this in many different ways, but the simplest in this scenario would be to adjust the bonded contact interaction to account for this gap, effectively fusing the components together. Running the under constrained bodies command once again, we see a message that the model is fully constrained, and we should be ready to run the study. But I will warn you, contact interactions like we're using here, as well as bolt connectors, are only considered by this tool when using simulation professional or premium, and only in static studies. So if you are using contact interactions or connectors in a different study type, or if you're using simulation standard, you may get reports of under constrained bodies despite having a fully constrained model. But, if that's the case, you wouldn't be seeing an error message for under-constrained models when solving the study. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you learned something useful today, give this video a like to help others find it too. And consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with our latest tips and tricks on everything from design to simulation and manufacturing. If you're interested in learning more about simulation diagnostics and other helpful tools, consider taking a look at our troubleshooting SOLIDWORKS simulation course over at SOLIDPROFESSOR.COM. It's packed with best practices and troubleshooting for meshes, and even includes an entire section dedicated to dealing with under-constrained models. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.